pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Sisters and brothers, you can see I don't have my robe on. I'm in survival mode. <laughs> The scripture today is an account of Jesus teaching the parable of the sower. While the subject is about seeds and growth, there are many insights in this parable and many insights that we may hear as we listen to it. Parables are teaching stories, always about the context that the hearers that heard them would know about. Farming was very familiar to people, so it was not unusual for Jesus to tell parables about things that grow, about farming. But also in the stories were rich meaning. And you can tell as, you, as we delve into it that there are things to discover. There's always little nuggets to discover. Jesus used them, these parables, effectively to teach, sometimes to manage conflict, and sometimes to inflame conflict. Parables to me are like puzzles. When we fit the meaning together, we sometimes end up with an image of something that we didn't think we were putting together. Today we sit at the feet of Jesus and unearth how seeds and growth speak meaning to our lives. A commentator posed this question, why does the gospel find hospital space to grow in some but not in others? Gary Peluso Verdend also contends that the flip side of this question is what are necessary conditions for faithful discipleship? This parable has been looked at from many angles. It can be called the parable of the sower, the parable of the four soils, the parable of the miraculous yields. It definitely conveys a story about the miracle of faith. Jesus begins with a description of the trials of the first century farming, and everybody who heard it would have known them. In his time, one would cast seed out and then plow the ground. With this scattered approach, there was room for seeds to fall on all different kinds of soil, thus the rocky, the shallow, the thorns and weeds, and the good soil. Those were the facts of life that everybody in his day was familiar with. The sower went out sowing and the seeds landed everywhere. Megan McKenna, author and writer and workshop leader, relates how this story was acted out in a deaf community. And the sower moved around the room, flinging her arms as the seeds were going everywhere. And the others would run and fall wherever they landed, like desks, trash can along the edges of walls, or clumped into groups. Megan McKenna writes, the image was striking. It was very apparent that the seed in us, and that the seed is in us, and that life is like a field that we're all involved in to one degree or another. The sower does not know what is in the soil's surface, where the ground is hard, where the ground is shallow, where the seed weeds will choke. All the seed in Matthew's story is good seed. The sower's purpose is simply to sow. McKenna states that each one of us must decide in this story who we are, what we choose to be. Are we the sower? Are we the seed? Are we the soil? Sowing results in some growth. What makes seeds grow? Do we? Or is it God that gives life and growth? Many times we harvest what someone else has grown. The whole reason for sowing is the harvest that follows, collecting that grain to make wheat for bread, food for others to eat. We sow to live. We sow to make bread. McKenna says the yield is for others a responsibility, uh, the yield for others is a responsibility we embrace. So we sow to care for others. Now let's think about the seed. All seeds have equal chance to survive, except not all soils will nurture that seed, that life, very well. As the seed grows, we begin to see ourselves in the group that yields. Of course we are. Of course, Jesus' community might have seen the larger reality of poverty and persecution and massive numbers of people 
moving out of the region, a fact that might indicate how seed did not grow. There is, after all, no guarantee. Look around. Look around today at who is here and who isn't. Um, Janice said it looks like one side of the church is missing. She's right. Um, but who's here and what are we here for? We might be trying out a church. We might be trying out Christianity. We might be lonely. We might be here for a deeper purpose. We might be here because we're with family. We're here for all kinds of reasons. We sow the seed and we bear the heartache that this parable speaks about, the joy and the challenges of seed growing. The seeds of our lives can be vital and they can be full of spiritual significance or they can fail to produce. The length of time it takes to germinate and grow is God's good timing. Now let's think about the soils. The four soils, hardened, shallow, thorny, and good, serves to remind us, the church, of necessary conditions for faithful discipleship. Why do we choose to sow seeds on the soil of the footpath on the edge? Why do we? Megan McKenna says these sowers turn into edge walkers. Edge walkers have religion or an association with religion, but skirt the real issues so not to become fully invested. She likens the rocky ground, the rocky soil, and the shallow soil to the immediate response that quickly dies away. People see themselves as growing in fast spurts, but then losing interest and intent just as quickly. They get scorched a lot and burned. Then there are seeds who find themselves among thorns and bushes and thistles. They see the company they keep is choking them to death. So much that the world mitigates against them and chokes the life or wonder of their faith. The reality of the soil we live in can make us uncomfortable. We may want to change or shift our home base. One of the commentators wrote that if we imagine ourselves standing on a train track and the train's going to come in 10 seconds, then we'll think about this more intentionally. We will act to ensure our very lives. The nice part of this parable story is that there always will be those who hear and those who believe, those who grow and mature in the faith. But there is also the other side that prepares us for the darker side of life, where storms gather, where the shadow of the cross exists, reminding us that there is a cost to our freedom from wrong decisions. Frog was in the garden. Toad came walking by. What a fine garden you have, Frog, he said. Yes, said Frog, it's very nice. But it was very hard work. I wish I had a garden, said Toad. Here are some flower seeds. Plant them and see. Put them in the ground and soon you will have a garden. How soon, said Toad. Quite soon, said Frog. Toad ran home. He put the flower seeds into the ground. Now seeds, he said, start growing. <laughs> Toad walked up and down a few times. The seeds did not start to grow. Toad put his head close to the ground and said loudly, now seeds, start growing. Toad looked at the ground again. The seeds did not start to grow. Toad put his head even closer to the ground and said loudly, Now seeds start growing. Toad looked at the ground again, and the seeds did not start to grow. Toad put his head very close to the ground, and he shouted, Now seeds start growing. Frog came running up the path. What is all this noise? My seeds won't grow, said Toad. Well, you're shouting too much, said Frog. Those poor seeds are afraid to grow. <laughs> My seeds are afraid to grow, said Toad. Of course, said Frog. Leave them alone for a few days. Let the sun shine on them. Let the rain fall on them. Soon your seeds will start to grow. That night, Toad looked out his window. Drat! said Toad. My seeds have not started to grow. They must be afraid of the dark. So Toad went out in his garden with some candles. I'll read them a story, said Toad. Then they will not be afraid. Toad read a long story to his seeds. 
And the next day, Toad sang to his seeds. And all the next day, Toad read poems to his seeds. And all the next day, Toad played music for his seeds. But guess what? They didn't grow. What shall I do? cried Toad. These must be the most frightened seeds in the whole world. <laughs> then Toad felt very tired, and he fell asleep. Toad, Toad, wake up, said Frog. Look at your garden. Toad looked at his garden. Little green plants were coming up out of the ground. At last, said Toad, my seeds have stopped being afraid, and now they're growing. And now you have a nice garden, too, said Frog. Yes said Toad, but you were right, Frog. It was very hard work. <laughs> Sowing and growing seeds is very hard work. Time is of essence, and time proves how things happen in growth, in change, in transformation. It's not our fault that we land on hard ground among the rocks or the thistles. What haven't we heard? Or what haven't we seen today through this story? God sows seed, and we do some of the work to yield the harvest that becomes seed for bread for the world. We tell or share our story of God with others. That's simply what we do. That's sowing seeds. It's that simple. Becoming the good soil is impossible without God's help. So cultivate yourself. Beware of being sidetracked. Be the rich soil or the seed sower that you were intended to be. May we, the church, be open to the part of the story that spoke to our heart today that was intended just for us. And may we all trust that God has, God's word has spoken and its truth is in our hearts today. Amen.